Hello everyone and welcome to episode 39 of Aura Aura Live. We are here at the beautiful Soho House this afternoon and um, I'm sure most people already know her but I will be chatting with Angel Siangle of Art Basel today. Hi! Hey. Hello! <laughs> Hi Adeti and thank you Aura Aura for giving me this opportunity. Um, it's a privilege to be talking with you. And we're very excited to have you here as well. It's been a uh, yeah, some planning has been involved. We were very excited to have you on and now we have the perfect moment yes. right before the upcoming fair to yes. chat with you. So yes, yes. we're all very excited. <laughs> um, of course, we will be talking about all things Art Basel today. Before we get started on that, just want to chat maybe a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. So Angel, as you know, is the regional head of gallery relations here in Asia and you oversee the gallery relations for the Hong Kong show. But why don't we talk a bit about your life and your career prior to Art Basel? Yes, yeah, so um, I moved to Hong Kong in two, 2012. Um, and before that, I was in Dubai. Um, some of my friends or colleagues who work with me knows um, I was working for this private collections, um, the Farouk collections. Mm -hmm. um, um, hosted um, their kind of uh, events and um, collection shows, um, kind of um, artist program. Um, and I was there for three years. Um, before, before Dubai, I was um, back in London. Um, right. I was uh, in like many young um, kind of people in, art, in the art industry um, trying to get different experience, um, working, interning for galleries, um, art fairs as well. Um, so yeah. But your original background during university, that wasn't art, right? I remember you were yes. studying something else earlier. Um, so my first degree is urban planning and design. Um, because um, my very traditional Chinese family um, didn't really believe that I could get a career out of art. Um, so they were like, you have to get like a, some, like a degree maybe in the creative industry, but something make, practical. Sure, yeah, something, <laughs> make sure you get a job afterwards. Um, so um, I always wanted to go to UCL. Um, so I basically, at the time, um, back in the days, they had this like, huge book um, I just kind of like fl flip through okay um, which one is closer it's not art but close enough to this creative um, zone that allows me to get a job as well um, so I kind of set my um, eyes on urban planning okay. at the time I didn't even know what that was about but I saw like designed uh, and you designed the city and that's um, quite creative yeah, yeah and I was like mm, sounds okay um, so yeah, th uh, that was my first um, degree, um, but I still thought that oh, that's not enough of creativity. Right. I, I was, uh, my heart was still um, really chasing after arts because even when I was doing my first degree, I was um, studying fashion photography, mm -hmm. um, I was interning in the galleries um, already. Um, so eventually uh, I proved to my family that I could get a first degree and mm -hmm. if I need I will have a job <laughs> but then my second degree um, I did modern and contemporary art um, with Christie's education right um, and you mentioned you were in the Middle East earlier and I know you co-founded um, something which is called the mobile art gallery yes. um, could you tell us a little bit about that as well yeah so um, like uh, I had a bit of a non-profit background um, basically um, I like my friend and I really just want to um, contribute to the art scene and bring bringing contemporary art um, to people who do not have access um, this sort of access to um, contemporary art mm -hmm. like us um, so we thought of um, finding a sponsor um, who could help us to basically um, transport this art project into areas that it's um, probably less gentrified right. um, so we found a truck um, like a kind of a moving company oh. that to sponsor us um, to give us this truck 
and we just renovated the inside of the truck and we found the artists um, who would um, collaborate um, with us and donate the art um, to this project. Um, and we, um, we also work with um, Art Dubai, uh, I think that was in 2013 as well, right. um, the first time debuted. Um, in um, at the opening of Art Dubai, mm -hmm. so the truck basically um, brought this project um, from Art Dubai, um, from the basically the main entrance of uh, Art Dubai to like the heart of Dubai where the migrants um, will okay. be living, and um, they would never really have the um, privilege to. Um, view contemporary art um, the way it, um, we could we could right so yeah so that was um, the first year of mobile art gallery however I came to Hong Kong um. and started working for Art Basel right. so I basically had to um, stop um, this project but hopefully in the future that sounds very interesting or you can bring something very similar to, yeah. to Hong Kong because I guess a lot of people <laughs> don't know maybe more of the curator side of the work that you do as well. So that's yes, quite interesting. Yes, a little bit yeah, before Art Basel. Yeah. So your partner hasn't continued that project in... in My partner Hawaii. actually, um, uh, she, she is from Hawaii. She oh. actually went back to Honolulu and founded um, the Honolulu Biennial. Oh wow! Yes. <laughs> so yes, as you mentioned, then the next step, you've, uh, you came to Hong Kong and you've been working for um, Art Basel. Um, I guess since the very beginning, so it's been yes. nine nine years now. Yeah. Um, how did you come across this opportunity? Um, that was also a bit random. Um, I basically, um, my dad and I was just talking. My dad is from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Well, um, he moved to Hong Kong in the 80s. And um, he was encouraging me to basically um, you know, look for opportunities in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is such an amazing city. And um, at the time I was, you know, I, you, when you were younger, you just like refrain from like coming home um, because you just want to be out there and all the freedom. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, like kind of like going through all the adventures. Um, but um, just to kind of like shut my family up, um, I looked for this one job because I knew that Al Basel um, was moving to Hong Kong at the time. And I went to Al Basel's website apply um to, um to this one open job opening to art basel and um literally was not expecting anything um but they rang me up two days later had um one phone interview with magnus renfrew right. um, the director of art basel at the time um and then that becomes history I basically moved to Hong Kong within three weeks time. Wow. Yeah, I, um, the, the departure of, uh, from my um, collection, from my, um, the private collection that I was working for was quite dramatic as well because I, had, um, I have a very close relationship with a collector, mm -hmm. um, Rami Farouk. And um, I was telling Odetti the other day that um, literally he, he had to like walk away from the gallery um, for like two days um, when I first told him about um, my departure of uh, returning to Hong Kong. But he came back two days later, like holding my hands and gave me his blessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. It must have been hard to say goodbye because you mentioned yeah, you really yeah, enjoyed that. Yeah, a little family yes. in Dubai. Yeah. yeah, But now I build an even bigger family in Hong Kong. That's yes. incredible. That's exactly that. Um, I guess it's, you've worked in so many different aspects of the art industry. Um, I, another question I would have for you and, and I'm quite curious about is, so what attracted you at first um, in terms of working for a platform like Art Basel? Because it's quite different from a gallery or a private collection or um, all the curatorial work that you've done before as well? Yes, um, obviously um, Hong Kong um, is always um, been my second home, even mm -hmm. though um, I never really grew up in Hong Kong, but I've been coming to Hong Kong every summer holiday. And um, I came to Hong Kong to participate in Art Hong Kong um, back, uh, back in 2012 yeah. or 2011. And, um, 
before uh, before the fair started, um, I walked around Hong Kong, tried to um, you know make relationships, um, make some connections, and I realized um, there were not that many contemporary art galleries um, in Hong Kong at the time, mm -hmm. and um, I like even maybe just in my unconscious, um, like I I do like the feeling of. Um, you know, growing and building to be part of like, you know, um, the city's art scenes, um, the building the foundation of it. Right. Um, that was the, also the reason why I went to Dubai um, at the beginning, because when I arrived in Dubai in 2008, um, Dubai was not that big on contemporary art. Right. Um, but by the time I left, they had Elsa Keld, um, they had an art fair, they had two art fairs actually, they have one in Dubai and one in Abu Dhabi. Um, and so maybe unconsciously I just you know want to return um, otherwise I, I could have just said no to my dad um, but um, my heart is somehow you know taking me back back here back here and um, really want to contribute something to this city and um, I think what Abbaso has been doing um, as we all know is um, you know what we really want to do here in Hong Kong is to support the um, local art community mm -hmm. um, and so far we've been very pleased to see how much this community has grown in the past few years yeah. you know it's yeah. grown very quickly because I think um, our timeline is quite similar I moved back to Hong Kong about the same time yeah. as you did and you basically, we basically watched Hong Kong change and grow. And you mentioned when you first came and joined the team, it was right during that transition period between our Hong Kong um, to Art Basel. Maybe some specific growth and changes that you've, you've seen or witnessed, or maybe even personal milestones for you, because nine years is, is a long time. Yes, um, nine years is a long time, but it's even longer for Hong Kong because Hong Kong has the ability to grow so much within a short period of time. Very true. Um, what has been changed uh, within our Basel is, um, I think it's the mentality, um, you know, how we all um, used to think, um, you know, our Basel in Basel, mm -hmm. um, it's basically this very privileged art fair that um, everyone um, wants to, you know, um, take a booth, um, take have a presence. Mm -hmm. um, but nowadays, it's not just the European art scenes. It's not. Uh, it's not just the U.S. art scene that is important. Mm -hmm. um, the the presence of Art Basel Hong Kong really strengthened. Um, the Asian um, contemporary art scene. I think Gagosian just had their 10 year anniversary yeah. and they came here just um, a little bit before our Basel's arrival. Um, and then basically since 2013, the first edition of our Basel. And then just you see this like international art gallery just like pop, pops Popping up in. like, mm -hmm. um, you know, overnight you start seeing this international um, level of um, art exhibitions um, and obviously um, you guys as well so, um, yeah. I, I still remember um, your previous galleries in um, Central yeah. right like along Hollywood Road uh, a lot of the galleries um, were along like Hollywood Road yeah. back yeah. in the days and now um, like all these galleries developing into that like different pockets yeah. um, the the um, the rising of Wong Chuk Han you know um, my mom used to uh, my mom is from Shanghai and she used to work um, in Hong Kong very briefly for a few years um, back in the 90s I uh, recently I told my mom about Wong Chuk Han my mom didn't even know what Wong Chuk Han where Wong Chuk Han <laughs> was because that is not really an area that people would hang out yeah um, very industrial yeah quite far away exactly even though um, Ocean Park is right next to right, it um, people still didn't really pay attention to that um, area um, and um, Kowloon you know um, mm -hmm. Kowloon becomes such a kind of um underground type of like art hub as well Shamshui Po yes. 
it's um, completely different just the past few years exactly and um, as well as all the, these museums like rising up in um, West Kowloon um, and um, Chaiwan there was um, a time Chaiwan was also very popular yes um, or a lot of second spaces for a lot of galleries exactly. as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And my father has been living in um, Shenwan for the past 30 years. And when I was um, little coming um, to visit him in Hong Kong, um, Shenwan wasn't really popular in the way of like, you come to Shenwan to see contemporary art. Right. It's it's more like um, you go to Molokai, like to see the antiques. Yes. Um, but nowadays, uh, Shenwan is such a trendy and like you know arty um, areas with. Um, it's actually really interesting. It's the kind of a crossing between um, antique and contemporary art. Yes. Um, so yeah, that the development of the art scene in the past nine year. And nine years in Hong Kong is incredible. Like I think it's from um, on an international level as well as um, from a traditional level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a mix, and that's how Hollywood Road slowly developed as well, right? Yeah. With antiques, and then galleries came in. That's where our gallery used to be, right on Shinhing Street. And then you see these very interesting art buildings popping up, where the whole building is with 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 um, art galleries inside, like Petter Building or. Um, H Queens and now you have PMQ and Tycoon in so many areas kind of um, yeah just flourishing due to the kind of the art industry and yeah exactly the community. and of course a lot of that is related to Art Basel Art Basel coming to Hong Kong and definitely generated a lot of attention and interest um, and Art Basel was amongst one of the first um, earlier international fairs to develop the Asian market and this area. Why do you think that was or perhaps what potential did or does Art Basel see in the Asian region? I think it's um, pretty obvious that Hong Kong is really the hub um, of art um, and especially contemporary arts now mm -hmm. um, you know being being in the kind of a, in terms of transportation um, we have we have the privilege um, to be like right in the um, middle um, that's very connected to Southeast Asia um, next to mainland China um, Japan and Korea any collectors that's in um, finance they ha they they have, um, you know, they, they have something to do with Hong Kong. Mm. And um, so that is obviously the most important, uh, most obvious um, uh, factor why our Basel moved to Hong Kong. And also, um, you know, it's, um, for tax reasons, um, mm. it's much easier for um, galleries to operate a space in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, and easier for collectors, you know, buying and selling. It's um, much more convenient compared to a lot of the countries um, in Asia. Um, and still, um, you know, it, um, the freedom of speech in Hong Kong um, has so far remained um, a certain level um, of convenience for contemporary art to, you know, um, perform itself. Right. And how do you think this Asian edition kind of compares to the Western counterparts? Because um, our Basel Hong Kong, as the youngest of the three fairs, has the Hong Kong edition impacted the rest of the world or even the other fairs, like ba at Basel and Miami? Um, definitely, I really think so. Um, like we uh, even in in inside our company, um, the attentions on um, growing diversity becomes more and more important. Mm. Um, it's um, obviously um, the art scene um, is already aware, um, you know, um, the importance of Asia, um, and from a day to day. Um, you know, um, work is experience, um, especially in the art in industry. Often we prioritize um, the European colleagues and the US um, just because, um, you know, con they, they have been doing contemporary art um, for a very, very, very long, long time, time mm -hmm. um, which we obviously very much respect um, their, their culture, their knowledge, their expertise. Um, however, I think, um, how, what our Basel Hong Kong um, does internally and externally is to raise the um, awareness of 
um, we also have like um, a very high level of importance and um, for other regions to really respect us as well. Right. Um, and through your years of experience of understanding the Asian market and being here in, in Hong Kong and running the show, do you think a large part of that influence is due to the collector base here? Like how do you think kind of the collectors here in Asia compare to to other regions or any unique kind of collector profiles that you've come across? Um, funny that you ask. Um, <laughs> we just, um, our Basel just published um, a video, um, Meet the Collectors. If you haven't checked it out, please um, visit our um, Instagram. Um, collectors in um, Hong Kong are amazing because they're very supportive of the local art scene. Mm -hmm. And they're very um, connected, um, you, you know, with the galleries. Um, they, they, they have this, um, like, Hong Kong spirit, which, which is um, when they travel to other art fairs, um, you know, they travel together and they like to check in with um, the galleries um, from Hong Kong that they know. Um, like for example Hong Kong Spotlight a lot of the sales that were kind of like um, going towards like Hong Kong Hong Kong based Hong Kong artists, based artists yes. Hong Kong based galleries um, it's very obvious that um, you know um, these Hong Kong collectors are really you know stand with um, the local art scene I guess now more than ever um, we're not traveling anymore which is probably why there is a lot of focus and we want to support um, our local art community and collectors get to reconnect with a lot of um, artists that are here which is one of the things that we've been doing with the program as well um, but a topic we, we've all been talking about obviously is art during the pandemic um, it's it's a topic that we've been talking about since uh, 2020 a year and a half later um, different parts of the industry, we all have come uh, across various challenges. Um, what do you think, in your opinion, has been the biggest challenge for our industry so far, or even from the art fair point of view? Um, I think the biggest challenge, which I believe many of you will share the same opinion with me, is you cannot travel to see the art, um, travel to see the museum, you know, the galleries that you um, love to visit on a very regular basis. Mm. Um, you cannot see what you want in person um, because um, no matter how technology develops, I think this physical connection is um, it, it, irreplaceable, you know, mm. irreplaceable. Um, and that that was um, all of our biggest challenge. How do we bring this experience to our audience, um, you know, as close as a physical show? And how have you guys been overcoming this challenge? Um, what we, um, firstly, I think at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, what we did, um, we rolled out um, OVR, online viewing rooms, mm -hmm. um, basically in weeks. Um, obviously, online viewing rooms um, is a technology that we have been studying and investigating f uh, in the past years. Um, so we, we didn't literally just roll it out <laughs> in two weeks, but um, uh, we had to obviously, um, you know, put it on the table uh, much earlier than um, we'd uh, wish. Um, and that it's kind of like a bridge that we built um, at the beginning was very important to us. Um, how do we fill the blank? Um, right. How do we um, give um, everybody an opportunity to still see um, art, mm -hmm. um, even though they cannot um, see that in person? Um, and uh, like slowly we um, rolled out um, a series of um, digital program as well like the zoom conversations yes. um, and like digital screening um, our editorial teams have been very busy in the oh, past um, yes like <laughs> like more busier than ever um, we just want to keep up with um, you know um, what's um, what's out there we want to make sure that our audience um, always have um, you know updated information news uh, stories to read 
Um, yeah, so basically, whatever we can do in the past year um, to keep the connection um, mm -hmm. with our audience, um, we have all tried. Um, and um, the coming show is very um, interesting um, if because we're still in the pandemic, um, but a lot of the galleries, um, they um, already want to participate, even okay. without being on site. They ask us, what, like, can we still do OVRs? Um, is there a way we can participate? Um, that's how we came about the um, satellite booth. Right. Yeah. And we can talk more about that after as well. Exactly. Um, and what we sh can expect um, for this year's um, edition of Our Basel Hong Kong. Um, I guess in Hong Kong, we've been very lucky. We've had, I mean, this will be the second kind of physical fair. We had Hong Kong um, Spotlight in November last year. Yes. But for the rest of the world, um, there have been very little physical mass events. Mm -hmm. um, how has that changed, I guess, the overall strategy and operations of Art Basel? So obviously you've included a lot of online viewing rooms and online resources, but there's so much competition out there. Um, what have you guys been doing in um, uh, what in terms of what else we've been doing um, I mean like, um, we really respect that um, all the other art fairs um, you know they are trying very hard to also um, keep connections um, with their own audience we respect how um, our fellow um, art fair organizers um, have been trying very hard to not just survive um, but also um, help their um, clients um, to basically um, create opportunities for them to still t um, has access to art. Right. Um, that is really important during a pandemic when you cannot, um, you know, when you cannot um, really travel or um, when your emotions really need yeah. some sort of a support. Uh, and that's when we realize art and culture become so important. Mm -hmm. And what else we, what we've been doing is um, we actually have Xianxia, which is um, offline events okay. happening, um, you know, um, in the in the past months we had um, events happened in India, um, event um, happened in mainland China, um, via our VIP representatives um, located in these regions, right. um, wherever possible, um, we we will um, you know basically make sure that um, we are still visiting back our um, you know our audience our mm -hmm. collectors in that region um, we make sure that um, in in the lead up to the our Basel shows in May um, these um, clients are also um, you know entertained and um, um, you know um, updated with um, what's new um, especially this year's our Basel it's um, is going to be very different to the past editions. And um, well, actually, I'm quite interested to see hear you talk about what would be different about this year's edition. Um, you mentioned there'll be the satellite um, yes. booths, um, and we've been reading a lot about that as well. And I know that's been very well received, and there's going to be a lot of galleries that can't physically be here, but have presence here at the fair. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share a bit about that as well for the audience, yes. something to look forward to? Yes, mm -hmm. um, so the satellite booth is um, one of our biggest inventions for the 2021 show. Um, we have actually um, more than half of the galleries are taking satellite booths. Okay. We have 70% um, of exhibitors actually come from outside of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and 50% of the show are taking um, a satellite booth. And this satellite booth is basically a showroom concept um, presentation um, where galleries can um, participate without being physically on site. Um, we will have a group of booth assistants um, um, trained um, by Art Basel um, to present um, in the booth on behalf of the galleries, basically facilitate um, connections um, for, the, for the galleries who are um, back in their own cities. Okay. Um, and we will um, obviously not 
um, be dealing directly um, in in terms of sales um, because the we um, we will have like QR codes um, on sites um, so visitors can scan the QR code if you want if if they want to talk about sales buying right. and sell um, you know buying the artworks so that goes directly back to the gallery exactly okay. exactly um, but our booth assistant um, will be there to explain the um, project right. um, explained a bit about the artists and the galleries um, so yeah this is um, one part one huge part right. of what we've been um, work, working very hard on in the past months. And that sounds like a, a lot of work, just preparing everyone and making the connections between all the assistants and the galleries and their home countries. Yes, exactly. We just announced um, Abazo Life as well, oh, okay. um, which is the digital platform of Art Basel. So instead of only OVR, online viewing rooms, um, uh, which um, becomes one component of our Basel Life. Right. Um, so our Basel Life also includes a series of virtual programs, you know, pre-recorded and live um, elements, um, you know, about the show. Our crew actually is already like actively going around Hong Kong, um, you know, to film materials. We want to create this sense of tr transportation to Hong Kong to the show a lot of our um, very regular travelers um, like fair goers um, they all very miss Hong Kong yeah. miss the show they can't and be here this year yeah, yeah and basically we want to create a um, you know the experience that they so they're it feels here. Like they're here yeah they're here with us and, and they're involved the yeah, exactly. So there will be lots of surprise on site. Um, okay. There are lots of um, you know new elements um, and the f a format that um, our audience has never seen before. So any I myself very looking forward to the any show. Any sneak as well. peeks for us, or anything you can tell us? Sneak peek. Yeah. Yes, I have one sneak peek oh. for you, um, which we have not yet um, publicly announced yet, which is the film sector. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of people already know that um, in the lead up to the show, we already have a digital film program yes. um, that um, started um, back in February. Um, and the last two films is currently being played. Um, you can visit our website um, to see the last two films. Um, and then um, we will have Eight, we will have a physical film sector screenings at the Hong Kong Art Center, Louis Cool Cinema. Okay. Um, and we also um, is working with a video touch. Oh. Um, and they will have a screening um, and a talk about um, NFT. Oh, that's during very the show. interesting. Yes. We're much looking forward to that. Yes, I can't that's tell you more, more because I don't want to be the spoiler. That's okay. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> but I guess another thing, there's been so many changes overall. And I know that you guys have added so many interesting new elements to last year, this year, kind of adapting and um, as the rest of the world changes. Um, what else can we look forward to in terms of future additions? Do you feel this art fair model that we're, we currently are using and adapting, is it working? Or do you think we're kind of work, uh, you guys are working to do something new or this model might need to change in the future? That is a million dollar question. What's the future of Art Basel? Yes. Um, obviously, um, we all know, especially since 2020, mm -hmm. um, we just have to, you know, be ready to adapt to changes. Um, and we constantly look for opportunities to further support galleries. First, uh, first of all, you know, this is our core. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is the core of the business is to support um, the scene. We have the social obligations towards Hong Kong, towards the culture here. Mm -hmm. um, and but in terms of format, we will, you know, continue um, to embrace um, a physical art fair. Um, even this um, coming show in May, um, even though it's a hybrid show, we have um, the uh, we have a digital platform as well as um, the physical art fair. Um, however, the digital platform is complementing the physical right. art fair. So we still want um, to focus and the and bring the attention to the physical, physical art fair, fair mm -hmm. um, because we still truly believe that um, physical connections um, cannot simply be replaced. Right. Um, well, 
I can say that in maybe it's you know in the next few years in the next five years next 10 years um, you never know what the world will become you know in the future um, but we try our best to really just aim for bringing the best experience that we can um, to our audience um, at the same time t to really just elevate experience of viewing art mm -hmm. um, so yeah this is the first ever hybrid show of um, at Basel um, and we will definitely look for um, you know the most suitable format um, to bring people um, together either mm -hmm. digitally or physically um, and um, to connect our audience with art. Do you think that once we're able to travel again, do you, um, this hybrid model that you are using this year, would this some be kind of reshaped the future of Art Basel, something you'll continue to use? Or do you think once, once everything goes back to well, or normal again, um, that we'll just be back at physical fairs and that would be it? Um, that's what everybody's talking about this new normal yes. right um, I think there is expectations of um, there will always be some sort of a digital element uh, remains even the world really goes back to you know um, normal normal mm -hmm. we, we made this innovation um, in you know in the past year and this year uh, we will continue to um, investigate how to improve from what we already have um, and digital does um, bring some level of um, convenience yes. um, to many people who um, may or may not, you know, travel. And um, I think moving forward, um, we do have to, um, you know, investigate more how to improve our digital platforms um, and make the uh, format of the show um, you know, more suitable for um, what has changed um, in, uh, in terms of like uh, people's behavior right. and mentality. Um, we never know because even after like so much has improved in terms of technology, people are still very, you know, tired of watching things online. Yes. We've been um, bombarded with it for the past exactly. year. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it's um, the most important thing is to really find a balance between um, how much um, people can focus digitally mm -hmm. and how much people want to enjoy physically. Right. I think that's a challenge that we are all Facing. trying to overcome yes, and fixing. Exactly. Um, even for artworks, what translates better online? What? What? Because some artwork just it's better in person. And no matter how Absolutely. you photograph it, film it, present it, it, it just doesn't work as well online. And it's very much about an in-person Absolutely. Experience. Absolutely. We could do this over Zoom as well. But, but it wouldn't be quite the same. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. Even for the audience, it yes. will be um, easier to, you know, watch a proper interview rather than like a dialogue taking place in two different like squares. One quick last question. Also from an audience. Yes. Um, will our Basel ever expand beyond the current three locations? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would never say never. Um, like, um, like I said, you know, we are we are very um, much um, trying t um, to find the best platforms um, to show art to connect with people. Um, but at the at the moment, we um, are very much committed to Hong Kong. Firstly. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, um, Basel being Basel, um, it's always going to be there. Right. Um, and uh, Miami Beach, we, ha you know, Miami Beach uh, has been, even du during the pandemic, um, we've been supporting um, the design district, um, oh, you know, as well. Yeah. Um, so we are very, very much committed to the cities um, that we are working with. Um, we feel um, especially our team, um, you know, half of um, the team, they are coming, they come from Hong Kong. Right. Um, we really feel the responsibilities of, you know, growing with the city um, and just bring Hong Kong's, um, you know, culture um, to a more international platform. Um, so, yeah, we love Hong Kong. We're going to be here for a very long time. So, good, good yes. to hear. <laughs> 
Um, before I wrap things up, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audiences um, about the upcoming show or anything you just want to quickly mention? Um, just stay tuned. Um, if you cannot come to Art Basel in person, please do check out um, Art Basel Live. Our um, first ever hybrid show um, has a very exciting digital platform. So please stay tuned. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us today. See. Thank you to So House for providing this wonderful space for us to chat today. Of course, our Basel in May, 19th to 23rd of May. We will be there as well. So please come, so come say hello. To visit. Yes, please visit. And for the rest of you, um, if you want to rewatch any episodes, please go on our socials, YouTube, IG, Facebook, and see you all very soon.